This is Ray Glasser on Saturday, April the 2nd of 2011, showing yet another car that I have purchased. Uh, this car replaced a beautiful 2003 Cadillac Seville STS that I bought in January of 2011. Nine weeks later, I traded even for this. We have here a Buick Century, 2001 Buick Century. And um, the reason I bought this is the Cadillac was killing me on gas. Uh, with the North Star engine and all that, it needed a lot of gas each week, and it was just kind of driving me crazy. Plus, it had a few issues, so I opted for this car instead. Nice little car. I'd never had a Buick Century before. I've had Buick Skylarks, and I had two Park Avenues. I never had a Century, and I think this is like the low-end Buick, if I'm not mistaken. But so far, it's fine. I've had it for seven days now. I bought it last Sunday, uh, March 27th. And so far, I'm pretty happy with it. Got these beautiful wheel covers, too. Nice and shiny. This is a light silver car with a gray interior. And it's got these deals above both front windows. I'm guessing to block out the wind noise. These had to be add-ons because they're not on the rear windows. Body's in good shape. A few scratches here and there, but nothing really bad. And I'm fairly happy with it. Terrier's clean. Terrier's kind of a two-tone gray. One of the two drawbacks for me of this car is cloth seats. I'm not a big fan of cloth seats. I actually like leather. But uh, it's clean, as you can see. Did a good job detailing this. The biggest plus for me about this car, the mileage, 49,000. Very low for a 10-year-old car. There's the usual window controls, remote mirror controls. Got a great stereo. This is um, the upper speaker, which is probably a tweeter. And down here we have probably a combination woofer, mid-range, or just a mid-range. I'm not sure. Let's get in the car and show everything while the car's off. One thing I'll say for cloth seats, this thing is quiet. <laughs> Analog controls, but that's okay. Light control, the interior lights and headlights, and it's actually got um, auto sensing or something that'll turn the lights on at dusk. It doesn't have the Twilight Sentinel, which the Cadillacs have, but um, it does turn the headlights on at dusk. A lot of warning lights, which I'll show when this uh, thing gets fired up. No driver information center, which of course I do miss. I love that on my Cadillacs. Here we go. This has the exact same radio, ironically enough, that my 99 Park Avenue had. Plus, it's got a CD player here on top. My Park didn't have a CD, it only had cassette. Uh, the CD works, the cassette works, the radio works, and I'm happy with it. Down here is the other drawback. No climate control and no outdoor temperature readout. It's just got an old-fashioned standard heat and air conditioning controls, both of which work just fine. But I do like to know the outside temperature. The last 20 cars I've had all showed that, and this one doesn't. But again, it's clean, it's quiet, the interior's in good shape. This has a 3.1 liter engine, and it's rated at 20 miles a gallon in the city, and either 29 or 30 on the highway. Another big plus, it has something the Caddy didn't have, these pull-out extensions on the sun visor, which I really, really like. And depending on what time of day I'm driving and what direction I'm driving, they're very nice to have. Usual mirrors. Oh, this must not have a control for the lights. No big deal. No sunroof on this car, but that's fine. The last two cars I had did have, did have a sunroof. Oddly enough, this car has OnStar, believe it or not. Kind of hard to see the controls that are on the bottom of the uh, rear view mirror. Let me crank this thing up in a second and we'll show you what it has. It has uh, controls for the radio on the steering wheel. And something new to me is this one on the left. That's for source and mute. You can actually mute this thing if you get a phone call or something from the uh, steering wheel, which is kind of nice. Okay, here's a nice shot of the dash while the car's off. 
when you turn the car on, all these little warning things come on. I'll have to freeze frame this so I can actually see what they are. There's a lot of them. This is what it looks like when the car turns on. It doesn't have the driver information center that the Cadillacs and Park Avenues that I've owned have, but it's got a little, lot of little warning lights instead. And here it is, the mileage gang. Not bad for a 10-year-old car. This thing runs very quiet for a little 3.1 liter engine. Very quiet. We have tape in, we have CD in. It shows the track of the CD. The source button down here goes to the FM. Then we go to the cassette. Go back to the CD. Very nice. The glove compartment is kind of small, but it's okay for what I need it for. It's got a remote trunk release button right up there. And the usual heater controls, AC controls, and all that. Alright, so that's... Uh, the car that I got in March of 2011. Let's see how long I keep this one. Should be a while because uh, it's good on gas. It's in good shape. I really have no reason to trade this. What I really wanted instead of this was the next Buick up, uh, the Regal, which is the exact same as this, but it's got the two things I'm missing, leather seats and climate control right there with uh, an outside temperature readout. But maybe next time. Here's the bottom of the... Uh, main doorway a few scratches a little bit of rust a little bit of paint missing but normally if this is clean usually I found the rest of the car is pretty clean let's show the engine I've never had one of these before 3100 but it's only a 3.1 liter some rust in here no doubt but it's fairly clean and it runs well, it runs very well, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Looking back here, woo, serious rust back there. Well, it's, it is a 10 year old Ohio car, so gotta expect that. Here's the inside, the hood. And that is the engine compartment. All right, Ray Glasser signing off from Saturday, April the 2nd of 2011. Bye-bye.